a lot of people are on a different like point in time where they are in their container journey. And that's why we have the awesome talk ahead of us. So let's welcome Stefan and Valentin, who are going to talk about containers, two pods to Kubernetes, Portman desktop. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having us. And thanks, René, for the, for the introduction. So uh, as uh, René mentioned, we are going to speak about containers and container tools as well that helps you to, uh, to, to, in your journey to go to Kubernetes. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen now to share the slide. Should be able to see my screen. And is it working? I think yes, it's working. Perfect. So um, to introduce ourselves, um, maybe Valentin, you want to introduce yourself first? Thanks, Stefan. Hi, everybody. I'm Valentin. I'm working in the Container Runtimes team. So in the Container Runtimes team, we, we're pretty much between the kernel and Kubernetes, or also now Portman Desktop. So we take care of all the low-level container technologies. We implement, maintain tools such as Potman, Scopio, and Builder. Off to you, Stefan. Yeah, thanks. And uh, I'm Stefan Lemer. I'm product manager uh, working on developer tools. Uh, so we, in, the, in the developer tools business unit, we are trying to build uh, tools that help the developers to work with, uh, with containers and work with, uh, with Kubernetes and OpenShift in a smoother, uh, smoother way. So um, as, a, as an agenda for, uh, for today, we will start uh, introducing a little bit uh, Podman for those who are not uh, familiar with the tool. And then we will discuss uh, a little bit about how developers can go more easily from containers to, to Kubernetes with Podman Desktop. We will spend a lot of time in a demo and we will introduce uh, the future plans that we have for the tool. And with this, I'm handing over to, to Valentin to, to speak a little bit about Podman. Thanks, Stefan. Already look, looking forward to your demo. They're always awesome. You're really a pirate of live demos. I'm very much looking forward to it. So before introducing Podman, I would like to dive a little bit into the containers philosophy that we have at Red Hat. Um, I'm not, I don't want to speak for the entire company, only for, for our team. So our, our approach is really to provide small solutions that allow us to innovate in functionality, security, stability, and all at different paces and speeds. As I mentioned before, there is not only Podman, but also Scopio, which is the tool, like a Swiss army knife for distributing, copying, and manipulating container images. Builder, as the name may suggest, is our Swiss army knife for building container images. So all our tools share the same underlying libraries for managing container storage, for managing container images. There's also Cryo, which is a tool also developed within Red Hat with a community together for running, powering containers and container images under Kubernetes. So really, we try to have a more Swiss army knife approach rather than a one size fits all solution. But arguably, Potman is the biggest of these tools. It does a little bit of everything. Next slide, please because Potman aims at being a drop-in replacement for Docker. So it is what we call a container engine. Some call it a container runtime, but the term, the term, the terminology of runtime is really overloaded. There's something else actually called a container runtime. So what we define under a container engine is that it manages images and manages containers, so-called pods, which is a group of one or more containers sharing certain resources. It manages volumes, networks, all the things we need to run and manage the lifecycle of containers. So Potman stands short for Pod Manager. And the initial goal, or 
one of the initial goals of Podman was to have a drop-in replacement for Docker. So many of the people in our team have been working, contributing, or have been maintainers at Docker initially. But early on, there were a couple of issues that we saw in the architecture that I'm going to talk about in a, in a minute or so that we didn't like, which made for instance, and in particular, rootless support much harder than necessary. So what I mean by rootless is that we can run containers without being root on the system. So this is not only great for multi-tenant systems, but also it increases a lot the security. And this is something that Popman supported yeah, since version one and actually before. So we have a clear focus on security and I think Podman is a great tool for developers. This is something that Stefan will focus on, but also for, for sysadmins. So maybe, maybe you don't see it at the outside, but I feel like an old gray beard Linux admin or old school Linux developer. So we got you covered there, but if you're on the Mac or Windows, then Podman Desktop got you covered there as well. One more click, please. Uh, yes, awesome. Thank you, Stefan. So talking about the architecture, I was elaborating or mentioning it just a moment ago, where I said early on, we, we saw some issues in the architecture of Docker, which is mainly shown here. So on the left-hand side, you see when you use the Docker client in the terminal, independent, you know, whether you, you run it on the Mac, Windows, or Linux. In almost 100% of all cases, you don't need to type sudo. So you can just run it as an ordinary user while the client is talking to what is called the Docker daemon, which is a server running in a systemd unit in Linux. This runs as root for historic reasons. Um, back when Docker started, many features of the kernel, such as layered file systems, um, but also networking really required root privileges. So it was just more convenient to put you know, the Docker client and the Docker group, which grants access to the Docker socket to talk to the Docker daemon, which in turn runs this root. But quite often when I stay, you know, actually when you run Docker, you run all your containers as a root user. And sometimes people say, well, Valentin, I don't need to type sudo, and this is why. You know, the client and the server are in the same group, the Docker group. So this allows the client to access the Docker socket, which in turn talks to the daemon, which in turn runs this root. So the problem with that is that, well, from a security point of view, it's bad. Even the rare case, an attacker manages to break out, then they have the holy grail, right? Then they run as root and then it's really hard. But also there is a common, or it's quite common to mount certain paths or even the Docker socket into the container or into running containers. And then effectively you grant the containers access to the entire route. So it's, it's just, it can be very difficult to secure these deployments. Podman, on the other side, does not implement server client architecture, but really a very Unix traditional fork exec model, such that all containers that you run with Podman are child or grandchild processes of the initial Podman command that you, for instance, typed in a terminal. So Docker, sorry, Podman is not a daemon, but well, if, I, if I'd say it's 100% daemon less, then I would lie a bit, a little bit at least, because we still need a process to monitor the container. It's not a daemon entirely. It's called Conmon, short for container monitor, which is started before the container and ends after the container. It also exits, exits with the same exit code, which makes it um, a pretty, which Let's Podman integrate very, very smoothly in system D. So keep in mind, there is this common process, but only for one container. So it's not managing multiple ones. It's only managing one container, which comes in pretty handy when running in system D. Next slide, please. So when I was just mentioning it, Podman integrates very smoothly in system D, which is one of the cornerstones for you know, running Podman 
in edge computing. So when it comes to edge computing, this is something very, very dear to my heart. I'll, I'll try to make it brief. I could talk about it for, for an hour, but I want to leave Stefan enough time for the demo. So there's a couple of things when it comes to running containers at the edge. So that means outside of our you know, traditional server room or cloud environment, that could be a car, um, it could be an IoT device. So these deployments need to be reliable. We want to be hands-off. We can't just SSH in or Sometimes even the network connectivity doesn't allow it. So we need a lot of automation. And also these, these workloads need to be self-healing. So if there's a, if there is an error somewhere or a bug, you know, if the workload goes down, this needs to be started automatic automatically, it needs to be detected. We need means to detect whether the workload still running is actually healthy or not, and also update it automatically. If you're interested in that, next slide, please we block a lot, a really a lot. And we did a lot of things in this space. Um, so go have a look. Um, we blocked a lot on enable sysadmin, on well, lots of Red Hat and open source blocks. But the coolest thing in this space is Quadlet. Quadlet is something that we developed together with the auto team. So now Potman is running in cars, which is pretty dope. So initially, the, 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 the workflow when you want to run Potman in, a, in system D, generate a unit, wasn't necessarily where we wanted to be. So then Alex Larson from the auto team came up with Quadlet, which you can see it as Kubernetes YAML or even a compose file, but for running containers in system D with Potman. So here in the middle, you can see a table, which Quadlet adds to the syntax of systemd. You know, you can specify an image, volumes, exec, all kinds of things. So this is really, really nice. And Quadlet takes care of generating all the complexity of a systemd unit file to run Potman smoothly, reliable, and all these things inside. So if you're interested in Quadlet, there's a couple of blocks outside. One written by Dan Walsh, which I think most of you know, and Egal, Egal Bloom, brilliant engineer, also working on auto and many, many, many other things. So I think this is pretty much all from my side here, and I hand it over to Stefan. Yeah, thank you, Valentin, uh, for, for the introduction of, uh, of Podman. I think this gives a good uh, context of uh, all the different capabilities that Podman is. Uh, is looking after. Um, <clears throat> right now, I'm going to transition to Podman Desktop. So Podman Desktop is uh, a, a native application that uh, provides an easy to use user interface to work with containers, but not only works with containers. It also enables you to more easily transition from containers to Kubernetes. So I'm going to, to introduce the tool. And that's very important because, in fact, when we think about uh, local developer environments, I think we can agree that they become impractical and the lack of consistency with production. In fact, there's a lot of complicated setup when you need to uh, get the environment up and running. And your laptop is naturally not able to run all the things that you will be running on production. You have limited resources. So it's also lack of consistency because the way you run things on a local environment are unlikely to be the way you run the things on a production environment, especially if you are running them on Kubernetes and OpenShift. We know there's a lot of many, many different pieces at work uh, that are difficult to reproduce on a, on a developer environment. And there's also a lot of discrepancies between the way the containers and composite applications are being create and configure to talk to each other on a local developer environment and the way they will be configured on a production environment. So to solve this, in fact, a lot of developers end up using things like Docker Compose to group applications. And in fact, it brings you um, in the worst of both world because the developers are using a technology that then needs to be translated for running onto a, a production environment. So this is hard. And we know that it is hard because there's also uh, a gap in the skills uh, that uh, the developer have 
on Kubernetes in, uh, in general. And that creates some disconnect between the developers on one side and the ops on another side. So there's challenges from local developer environments to deployment onto, onto production. And on your local developer environment, you may use base images that are coming from different sources with low or no security from using also different container registries. You may end up using Docker Compose as well. But on the other side, on Kubernetes or OpenShift, you need to use different type of base images. Maybe those have, have been created by your, uh, your ops team. You may use uh, different container registries and you will have some security constraints, which will be um, enforced to the workloads as well. And then the way you configure the application to be running on Kubernetes, obviously, is going to be with Kubernetes YAML. So, in fact, there's discrepancies to go from developer's environment to production, but there's also discrepancies when there is a bug that is happening on production and when you try to reproduce this bug on your developer environment. So as a result, there's a, an adoption barrier of the technology in this context. So with Podman Desktop, um, we simplify the workflows and the experiences uh, working with containers when you are targeting Kubernetes or OpenShift. In fact, we are bringing Kubernetes and OpenShift closer to the developers, and we are also trying as much as possible to minimize the discrepancies between the desktop environment, the developer environment, and the target Kubernetes uh, environment. So we aim to bridge the gaps between developer environment and production so that when you are working locally, you have an environment that is as close as possible to, to, to production. And in fact, with Spawnman Desktop, and you will see that in the demo, but you can start with containers and they can then be translated in pods, natively in Podman, because that's what you, you saw in the intro from, uh, from Valentin, is that you can run pods with, uh, with Kubernetes, uh, with, uh, with Podman. And uh, in fact, it, Podman also provides compatibility with other Kubernetes uh, objects. So once you have these pods running locally, you can then transition more easily uh, to a Kubernetes pod. You can run that onto a Kubernetes local environment or into a Kubernetes uh, remote that is uh, that you can connect to uh, as well. So Podman Desktop 1.0 has been released uh, a month ago. Uh, it provides uh, capabilities to install and configure uh, the container engine as well as Kubernetes local. You can install it and run it on Windows, Mac, and, uh, and Linux. Uh, it will provide capabilities to work with containers. Uh, there's also a bunch of capabilities related to uh, enterprise security and running a such a tool behind uh, your infrastructure. And uh, it also provides capability to bridge between your local environment and remote environment. And we will see that in the demo just now just now. So I'm going to stop presenting and present my entire screen, I think. Uh, this one. There we go. So this is the dashboard of Podman Desktop. On this dashboard, you can see that you have Podman, uh, which, is, uh, which is running. I have access to uh, the list of different images that I have been pulling in my, uh, in my environment. And uh, if I take uh, this one, which is an HTTPD uh, image, I can see uh, that, uh, that uh, summary, the history, and I can also run it. So I can, for example, uh, just run it here, and it will be shown in the list of containers that are running uh, here. So I can access the container. I can see the logs. I can also access the terminal. And in fact, let's see uh, a little bit. I have another uh, container which is running. It's a ready stack container. So there's a bit more logs, as you can see. Uh, I can access to the terminal, and I can 
actually interact directly with what's running into um, uh, into the, the container. So I can set up uh, my a, a key and I I can do a get definition and boom I have hello. So that's very handy. I don't need to remember what is the command that I need to do in order to uh, SSH directly into uh, into the container. So that's already one uh, one capability, which is pretty nice. I have um, also the ability to build a, a, an image. So I can uh, choose my container file or my, or my Docker file directly, and I can build it. So here I can do create.io search nation. Nation image, and I can build my container. So we will see the image uh, building, and it's probably going to to run uh, in background. But once I will have this image, most probably what I want to do is I want to push uh, this image to uh, to a registry. So inside of Podman Desktop, you have the ability to connect to different uh, Quay to different uh, OCI registries. Could be Quay, could be Docker Hub, GitHub, but you can also bring your own OCI registry. So it can be Artifactory if you want. It can be any any kind of OCI registry will be compatible uh, here. So once uh, the image will be built, and I should be able to see it in a moment, just here, uh, I then have the ability to push the image. So I can directly push the image on Quay. So it's going to take a, ah, not properly authorized. So I'm going to just reconnect, remove. Apparently, uh, I'm not able to connect. Oh, that's because I, I choose. Uh... Here you go. I'm connected, and I should be able to push my image now. Yeah. And if I go to quay.io, I will be able to see my DevNation image. So that's. And um, now what uh, I would like to, to show you is a different setting. So as you, I mentioned earlier, you have the ability to configure your proxy and your, uh, your VPN. You can connect uh, your different registries uh, as well. And you also have preferences where you can configure a bunch of different options for, uh, for the tool. You can configure uh, uh, the size of uh, the editor. You can configure the different uh, uh, different uh, options as well for, uh, for the application. Um, there is something which is a little bit interesting with the tool is that you also have the ability to run pods. So Podman provides the ability to run pods. So here I can see that I have already start some pod, but I can also just take uh, a Kubernetes YAML, for example, and I can say, hey, I want to run this YAML file with Podman. So I have this, and I can see my pod running here. And I will be able to also access to the container, access to the terminal. So that's uh, pretty, uh, pretty handy. The thing which is uh, also interesting is that if I have um, a, a container, I have this cube tab, which gives me uh, the, um, the YAML that I can use to run this container in a Kubernetes environment. So that's also uh, something that you can use. You can take this YAML file and you can just apply it onto a Kubernetes environment if you want. Now I have uh, an application. It's basically uh, uh, an application which is built with two containers. So it's my 
Python uh, application. And if I uh, click here, I will be able to see it live. So it's just a, a basic application, which is showing how much, how many times I have been visiting this, uh, this website. It's connected to a Redis database that I am using uh, as a cache. But what I, I want to do is I want to run that in, in the context of a, of a future deployment onto Kubernetes. So I have the ability to uh, actually take those two containers and uh, to uh, podify the containers. So I can take my two containers and run them as a group of containers under the umbrella of a pod. So I can do that. And here uh, I'm uh, asked uh, what parts I want to expose outside of my pod. So I don't want to expose my Redis database. So I'm doing, going to do that. So what it does is that it stops my containers and it recreates them as part of a pod. So here you go. Uh, I have my pod. If I access here, I can see the logs of my different containers. And uh, I can see my different containers running inside of, uh, of the pod. And if I click here, I should be able to also access my application. And you see the counter is reset to, to one uh, because uh, it's a, a new, uh, new start of the application, in fact. So that's good. Uh, it's running locally just uh, with, uh, with Podman. And uh, the application helped me to go from pods, from containers to, to, to pods. Now there is something that we are providing within, uh, within Podman Desktop. There is a concept of, uh, of extensions. And extensions are providing capabilities to support other container engines or Kubernetes distribution. So what we did is that we integrate Kind. Uh, so for those who are not aware, uh, Kind is a Kubernetes in, a, in Docker. So it, it runs, it set up a Kind cluster as a, as a container running locally. So here I'm going to create my, uh, my cluster. I can access the log and you can see that the control plane is, uh, is starting. will take a few seconds. And I will have the ability to get my cluster uh, running locally. Hop, storage case. Boom, I have my kind cluster, which is set up. So when this is set up. I have uh, the kind cluster, which is accessible from uh, the list of containers. And here I can see the logs of the cluster. But interestingly, I can also do kubectl inside of the container, and I can interact with the cluster uh, if I want. So let's say that now that I have modified my, uh, my application, I want to test it onto uh, onto Kubernetes. So I can take this uh, container. And what I'm going to do is that now I'm going to kubify it. So which means that I am going to generate the pod and deploy it onto Kubernetes. So I'm generating the Kubernetes manifest. And, uh, and here I have also uh, some, uh, some options related to the services. And I can create the ingress for my application. I hit deploy. And now what it does is that it deploy my application directly, uh, directly onto my, uh, my kind cluster. And in fact, if I want, I could have take uh, this image and I could have say, oh, I want to push this image to my, uh, to my kind cluster. So when it will be done, I will have my application running uh, onto, uh, onto Kine, and I can see it directly from here. So I can see the logs 
uh, as well for, uh, for the application. And if I connect to the port 1980, I should be able to see my application, which is running here in kind. So that's pretty cool. So from the from Podman desktop, I have been able to go from containers to pods running locally with Podman and now onto a Kubernetes environment. We are also providing uh, uh, an extension that allows you to run OpenShift on, a, on your local environment. So if you are interested by OpenShift, you can install the extension directly from the list of, uh, of extension. And then when you configure uh, the extension, you will have the ability to, uh, to set up which kind of presets and which kind of OpenShift local machine you want to, to run. It could be uh, OpenShift local with a single node cluster, or it could be based on, uh, on MicroShift, which is a little bit uh, lighter as well and faster to, to start. So I'm going to just start it. So it's it's going to start uh, from here. And you will see that my, uh, my Kubernetes context is going to switch from kind here to uh, MicroShift. So I, I, I will have MicroShift on start. Here. And I will be able to, to do the deployment of my application directly uh, from, uh, from Podman to, uh, to, to MicroShift uh, as well. I think I'm running a little bit out of time, so I'm going to, to get back to, uh, to the slides. Um, so that was the demo for... Uh, for uh, for Podman desktop, so you can see that you can go uh, from uh, from a, an application that is running in containers to a group of pods of containers running inside of a pod, and then go to to Kubernetes or OpenShift uh, very easily. In fact, the tool is free; it's completely open and extensible, and this is by default. And in fact, the way we are building it uh, is with different uh, components. So. On Windows, we are using uh, WSL for, uh, for the virtualization stack, QMU on Mac, and on Linux, of course, it's native. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities to extend Podman Desktop, so you can add custom actions, uh, you can add menus, different configuration, default registries, status bar, uh, and, and you can even extend the system tray uh, if, you, if you want. Um, but it's also providing the capability to, um, to support other container engine, such as Docker, Lima, or other Kubernetes provider kind. And there is one which is coming for, uh, for Minikube as well, built by the community. Uh, so that's, uh, that's also the different capabilities and how we keep the tool very open uh, for, the, for, for everybody. In terms of future capabilities, uh, we are going to continue our effort on uh, providing uh, efficient developer flows uh, when it's about working with containers. So we will simplify the experience for onboarding, especially if you are coming from, uh, from, from Docker. So we will show you how you can configure the Docker compatibility, which allows you to simply um, use Podman as a, as a drop-in replacement if you, if you want. Uh, we will also have support for the native hypervisors, such as Hyper-V on Windows or VFKit on, uh, on Mac. On the Kubernetes capabilities, we will continue improving the flows for podifying, so turning containers into Kubernetes objects, and then running those Kubernetes objects onto uh, onto Kubernetes environments. Uh, we will extend the ability to see the different Kubernetes objects directly from the UI of Podman Desktop. And uh, we want to simplify the transition from Compose to Kubernetes. So a lot of developers are using Compose today, uh, but uh, they, they, they also need 
to run their application on to Kubernetes. So we want to help them along this uh, this flow. On the OpenShift uh, support, uh, you have an extension today to work with developer sandbox. Um, you will have the ability to create your uh, your account. We will integrate an image checker. So when you run a container on OpenShift, there's a lot of prerequisites uh, in terms of security. So it's all about safeguards. And we will provide uh, tools to, to help you making your image compatible with, uh, with OpenShift. And we will continue our exploration to uh, to integrate MicroShift for uh, for developers, so that we can provide a tighter in integration with uh, with OpenShift uh, as well. If you are interested, uh, you uh, you can um, find the links here. So Podman.io, you will find everything we have been discussing today. There is also a book that is available on uh, developers.redat.com, Podman in Action, so you can download it from there. Um, and uh, and I don't know if we have enough time, but a big thank you. And if there are some questions, uh, we are happy to answer them. Yeah, so thanks a lot, both of you, Stefan and Valentin. Very great talk. Like. I'm obviously a little bit biased, but I really love Portman. Uh, just in the fact that it has a very nice UI, <laughs> like a very nice UI. And I love the integration with like Kubernetes and stuff. Like it's really a game changer for me personally, but um, yeah, really great stuff. But yeah, let's get to the question. We don't have a lot of time left. Um, one of the question was, does Portman also work as a Docker Compose drop-in replacement? So, um... We we are providing compatibility, which means that if you have if you have Docker Compose installed on your environment, uh, it's completely possible to, to use it in order to um, in order to uh, uh, to run your Compose uh, files with Podman. And in fact, inside of Podman Desktop, you have a way to configure that. I have not demoed it, but uh, it's also possible to do this. Cool, great stuff. Um, the other question was, it's, is it possible to define parameters like memory and disk size to a container on Podman desktop? Yeah, you have advanced settings. So when you are uh, configuring uh, the, uh, the container, you have some advanced settings that allows you to, to do that uh, as well, yeah. Cool, and the last question which has been advised was, is there like does the does it also work like if you have, if you're using WSL like the Windows sub uh, subsystem for Linux if you're using Portman in, in in there does it work for Docker uh, Portman desktop as well? In fact, uh, yeah, that's the way we we communicate to to Podman, and that's the way Podman is running on uh, Windows at the moment. So it, Podman runs inside of uh, WSL images, and then Podman desktop communicates. To, uh, to to Podman engine running inside of the WSL. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds awesome. All right, so that's for it for the questions for now. Again, just to emphasize again, later on in our main stage, you can ask all the different questions you might still have, get in touch with all the Red Hat out there and, and share whatever you have in mind. And even then beyond that, you can always reach out to the Red Hat and get in touch with us and talk about all the awesome stuff. Um, so thanks everyone until here, especially for Stefan and Valentin for this one and Maria for the last uh, talk. We really enjoyed both of them. And I am going to hand over to Tuel, who is going to do the moderation from now on. And I am going to lurk into the chat and watch all the chat, uh, all the sessions from now on as well. So enjoy everyone. We have a, like a five minute break again and we'll see us like 15 past. So thanks again, everyone. Thanks for having us. Thank you.